Right, let's see. Um, I'll just start because um, we don't have a ton of time, only 30 minutes. Um, let's see if some uh, other people will join us soon. I'll be doing this in English. Um, I um, understand that all sessions are recorded, so that uh, makes it most uh, usable for, uh, for other people as well. Um, this session is working in a Drupal issue queue. Um, I am Ilke Block. I'm a senior Drupal developer at OneShoe. OneShoe is a digital agency uh, from Utrecht. You can find me on Twitter as uh, Ilke Block. Uh, as well on uh, Drupal.org as uh, Ilke Block. Um, I've been a um, Drupal contributor since I think um, 2007 or so, so I've been around for quite a while. What will be we be talking about? Um, first of all, what are issues and what is the issue queue? You probably have some sort of idea already or you probably were not in this session, but we'll have a quick look anyway. We'll talk about um, issue statuses and priorities. We'll talk about the issue template. Um, and then we'll have a look at two workflows. When I um, created this talk um, at the start of this year um, for Drupal Camp London, I had a single slide talking about the future. Um, now I have a series of slides and I can actually show you uh, some of that future. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. <coughs> so what's an issue? Uh, basically, any change to uh, Drupal or a contributed project um, should be described in an issue. Um, we recognize uh, several types of, uh, of issues, um, bugs, features, tasks, plans, and support requests. And if you um, uh, work for an agency, you probably have a ticketing system. Um, and basically, that's the same thing, a ticket or an issue, it's uh, sort of the same thing. So what's the issue queue? Um, Drupal core has one. Um, each contributed project has one. There are some special issue queues, uh, not most notably the ideas and drupal.org um, issue queues. Um, and if we talk about the issue queue, um, that would be at slash project slash issues. Um, you can see there all the issues that are um, uh, in on Drupal.org for all um, contributed projects for Drupal Core itself. So that's like um, an enormous um, flood of issues. More useful is the uh, the one where you add the project at the end, and you can look at the issue queue for uh, for a single project. By the way, if you have questions, um, just drop them in the chat. Uh, Ilse is my moderator. She will uh, gather them and um, we can uh, talk about them at the end if there's some time left. I see I need to pick up my pace even a little bit more. There's not, uh, not that much time. Um, I need to be doing it over here. Uh, this is, um, if you look at a, a project page, uh, you um, may have noticed this bit of the of the sidebar. This is basically a summary of the issue queue. Uh, there's a search box and there's some statistics. And if you click through, this is what you'll see. Um, well, not from this page because this is the project page for MetaTag and this is the issue queue for Drupal.org. Uh, sorry, uh, Drupal Core, um, where you can filter on different types and different different statuses, which we'll all uh, talk about. Um, one thing, if you start working seriously on issues um, and you do it in your company's time, it's actually a good idea to tie your company to your Drupal.org uh, profile. Uh, you can do that like this. Um, you click on your avatar at the top right, you go to my account. There's a tab profile there, which you can edit. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, um, you find a set of vertical tabs. And under the tab work, you can uh, select your uh, organization if it's on uh, Drupal.org. If it's uh, if it's not, it's actually a good idea to uh, go whoever would um, 
uh, decide on that and make sure that your company is on Drupal.org as well. So let's look at some types of issues. Um, first up, uh, I would like to talk a little bit about support requests. They are a type of issue and theoretically you could get support from uh, the issue queue. So you can uh, create a support request issue when you're having trouble using Drupal or a module. Um, what happens more often actually is that you uh, create another issue, you create a bug or um, you create a feature request and somebody comes along uh, thinks, hey, but this is actually already possible. Um, and they change the type of your issue to support request. And of course, the neighborly thing to do is to actually explain how you can do what you want to achieve or um, what you're seeing is not actually bug, uh, a bug, but uh, it's supposed to work that way, that sort of thing. Um, actually, I recommend doing uh, trying to get support in other ways. Um, first up is, of course, the good old web, uh, web search. I use DuckDuckGo myself. Um, there is a great stack exchange dedicated to Drupal. Um, there is uh, Slack, of course, and there's also IRC. And on those uh, URLs you see there, you can find more information on, uh, on how to get on, uh, on those. Um, bugs. Um, Everybody has, I guess, a uh, intuitive understanding of what a bug is. Um, I uh, listed some examples from um, not too serious to uh, extremely serious, uh, not any, any specific order. Um, task, um, it's a, something that needs to be done. Uh, it's not necessarily bug, it's also not a feature. Um, this is something that needs to be done by someone. Uh, some examples include uh, refactoring some code, uh, maybe adding automated tests if they're not there for a certain part of a, of a project, that sort of thing. Feature requests. Um, this is also probably uh, understood uh, pretty um, well. Um, it could go from uh, new modules, new subsystems, or adding some small option or even removing something if it uh, improves uh, the product um, and it, it's not really uh, used. Um, and last is the type that um, may be um, hardest to, to understand if you're new. Um, plans, they are used uh, as meta issues, uh, something that would need uh, a lot of steps. You see, for example, some of the initiatives uh, that are running for Drupal core, they are plans, and then uh, they have lots of um, child issues linked to them to actually get uh, the entire initiative um, uh, done. Uh, issue priorities, that's another um, aspect of, uh, of issues. Um, there's four priorities, basically. Critical and major actually also have a, an important meaning for Drupal uh, core. Uh, major versions of Drupal core will actually not be released if there are uh, any uh, critical issues. Um, and major is just one step below that basically, uh, still very important, but um, well, not as important that major versions will uh, um, be blocked on them. Uh, I can go into more detail here, but I won't because uh, the time does not really permit. Issue statuses. Um, an issue will go through a certain life cycle. When you create a new issue, it starts as active. Um, and then usually uh, when somebody starts working on it, um, it'll go to uh, needs review. Um, when you've actually submitted the patch or uh, done something about it and you think somebody else should be looking at it, you can set the status to needs review. That person uh, can set it either to reviewed and tested by the community, but that uh, seldomly happens uh, right away. Usually it goes uh, through a cycle of needs work and needs review quite a few times before actually several people will have said, okay, I think this is good. and. Um, if there's like consensus whether and that it's actually good, it will be it will get set to reviewed and tested by the community by someone. You can do it yourself. Uh, 
uh, it takes some like finger pitching gefoel when you uh, set it to um, the RTBC is uh, um, the acronym that you uh, often hear about this. Um, basically, if several people have said that uh, it's good to go, then uh, it can be set to RTBC. And eventually when uh, a maintainer decides, yes, this is good, um, they merge it and they set it to the fixed status. And if it is, uh, fixed it will then um, uh, automatically transition to closed but closed in this diagram is cheating a little bit because there's not actually um, one uh, one closed status but several there are actually a total of six um, like i said closed fixed is assigned automatically you should not um, assign that manually the others um, can be uh, assigned by a person. Uh, basically, if somebody thinks or uh, people think, the maintainer thinks that um, uh, it should not be fixed as it uh, as it stands, it's either a duplicate because there are some other issue that basically describes the same. Um, won't fix uh, if uh, the maintainer judges it to be outside the scope of the module, that sort of thing. They all have their uh, um, uh, their own meaning and what that is you can actually find on that url that's over here in issue q slash status right creating a new issue when you um, consider creating a new issue um, you should really know first uh, when not to create a new issue there's a good article on lullabot.com about this on this url um, but it goes a little bit something like this. Um, first, make sure that you have the latest code. Um, often this is the development version because that is ahead uh, often a few commits or in some cases a lot of commits um, ahead of the uh, latest uh, official release. Um, make sure there are no other issues that describe the same thing. However, uh, in parentheses behind it, don't switch versions. Uh, don't switch an issue from one version of the project to another, but create a new one if the same applies to um, to a different version. And then, of course, you can refer back to the other issue. Uh, also, uh, a source of trouble is um, updates that have not been run. Make sure that you run updates either using the update.php uh, script in your site or uh, drush updb. And then when all else fails and you still have your issue, then you can create an issue describing it in the issue queue. Make sure you list only one problem per issue. It says one issue per issue. I, you probably understand what that means. Make sure you have a descriptive title. Give enough information. Um, you'll be surprised at how many um, uh, Issues there are that have like a single sentence that uh, probably makes perfect sense for whoever wrote it down, but um, anybody else doesn't really understand what's going on. Um, of course, also don't give too much information, but um, that seldomly happens. It's usually not enough. Step to re steps to reproduce are very helpful. What steps do you actually take to, uh, to run into your issue? How can somebody um, test it themselves? And last but not least, use the issue template. Drupal.org has an issue template. You can find it um, over here. Um, and basically, well, it looks like this. I can show it to you. You should go to my other screen to, to be able to scroll through it. Um, you start with a um, problem or motivation why you filed the issue, how you think it should be resolved, if you know how, of course. Uh, if you have any ideas what uh, what direction that should take. Uh, remaining tasks, what still needs to be done for the issue. Usually that would be like create a patch, uh, needs a review, needs some tests, that sort of thing. And then uh, a few sections about what uh, this patch changes or this, this issue would change if it got resolved. Uh, if there are any user interface changes, 
any API changes, uh, changes to the data model. And then um, two more sections. One is um, fairly new. It's a release note snippet. You could include it uh, to describe uh, what could be added to the release notes when the uh, issue is actually committed to a release. And if you update an existing issue, uh, there is a section for the uh, original description of the uh, of the problem. So that's a lot of info. Um, let's go into those workflows I talked about. Uh, how do you create patches? What is a patch actually? Um, it's a file describing the changes to be made to a set of other files. And those other files could be Drupal core itself or a trip module or uh, something like that. Um, how do you name your patch files? Um, I've called this section one for every taste. Um, I don't really understand why there are so many, um, but you can pick and choose from, uh, from the following. You can do just the issue number uh, and the comment number. Uh, that the patch goes with. Um, you could add a description. You could also add the project. Um, and I usually personally use this one. This is the most descriptive one. It says for what the issue is meant. Sorry, for what the patch is meant. It describes what it does. Uh, it says what issue um, uh, it is for. And it also has like the comment number to uh, to put it in order with other patches for the same issue. Then there's a few um, patch names that actually have some technical meaning. Do not test dot patch will actually not be applied by uh, the Drupal CI tool and will not actually run tests uh, on the result because you expect it to fail whatever you, you don't need to uh, spend resources on running tests that you know will fail anyway. Um, and um, the fail does not actually have a technical meaning, but it does um, tell you that um, the patch will likely fail. Um, no, I thought I, uh, I left one out, but I didn't. So working with patches, if you want to um, either apply patches or create patches, rem remember that Git is your friend. Uh, everything starts and ends with Git. Um, so before you start, make sure that you have a clone of the project's Git repo. Um, you can set up a, a special uh, Drupal install for just that module. Uh, what I often also do is that I actually have a running project where I have a problem and I make sure I have a Git checkout of the module, but I actually have my code changes in the, the project I'm working on and I copy them over and I commit them on, uh, in, the, in the clone whatever you uh, you do or whatever you like you, you can do but make sure you have a clone of the project and to apply a patch um first and um this can be essential it doesn't need to be um you can try and skip it and try to apply the patch and uh, just on the tip of the project but often you may need to find the actual commit the uh, patch was created from because it doesn't apply anymore on the on the latest version. Um, there you can create a branch. Um, it doesn't really matter what name that branch has. Um, you can use issue number dash short description. That's sort of compatible with the new um, Git workflow that I'll be telling you about shortly. Um, and then you just say git apply um, minus v and you uh, pass your um, uh, patches file path in. And the minus V is actually just uh, verbose, so that you see what's going on a little bit. And not unimportant, make sure that you commit this. Um, you could then start making changes before um, you commit, but that makes it harder to find uh, yeah, some uh, to find your history and the changes you made. So just um, apply the patch commit it and then start developing as you would normally making several commits uh, as much as you like because you can make patches from as many commits as you like <coughs> um, so creating a patch um, 
let's say that you found a problem, um, you checked out the module and you changed its code to make a fix. Um, you commit that fix, that's the branch that you, uh, you see up there. Um, you can simply create a patch with git diff. You say git diff uh, and then the difference between uh, the main branch. So let's say that's 8.x110 uh, or that's, that's actually a tag. Doesn't really matter as long as you refer to that um, commit over there. Um, the difference against your branch, so in this case, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, dash fix, dash it. And then you pass that into a patch file and you have a patch that you can post to Drupal.org. Or alternatively, like I was saying just now, you can do as many commits as you like and that command stays the same. Uh, commit uh, to your heart's content and then at the end, find the difference between the tip of your uh, fixed branch and the actual uh, release branch that you want to uh, create the patch against and you have your patch file. Um, one other thing that you might see um, uh, people mention is an interdiff. Um, it's a way for reviewers to quickly understand the changes that you made from one patch to the next. And created it, creating it couldn't be simpler if you know how to create a patch because it's, um, let's say um, that you have one patch version that's, um, not sure if you can see my mouse, but if at the fix a typo um, commit, and then you create another uh, uh, patch that is at the very tip, so at yet another tweak, uh, you can take, uh, you can create the interdiff by just taking the diff between those two. So like a git diff 68bcc uh, space b60aad, and then you pipe that into an interdiff.txt and there you have your interdiff. So that's an interdiff. Uh, another thing you might uh, hear about is rerolling patches. Um, basically um, that happens when the base project changed in such a way that the patch no longer applies uh, which you actually might know uh, from other contexts as a merge conflict um, it's really nothing more than that um, and actually git is pretty excellent at resolving conflicts um, you might not think so because you still get conflicts with git uh, it's definitely a lot better at resolving conflicts than um, just patches and trying to apply patches. Um, so how would you go about this? Let's say this is the situation. Um, the branch you see, um, it solves the issue. That's the result of applying uh, a patch that you need to re-roll. Uh, uh, re the uh, main branch has moved on since then. And then what you do to re-roll a patch is you merge in the main branch and often that's all you need to do. Um, in like eight out of 10 cases, that's fine. And you can just then create the diff between the top of the branch and the latest um, main branch again. Um, of course, it can be a more serious conflict. So at that point, you'll just be resolving a merge conflict like you would in any other Git project. Uh, it might be easy, it might be a bit harder uh, if you uh, you might need to, to find some help from somebody else. Or you might just say an issue, sorry, I don't know how to resolve the uh, the conflict, so I'm going to leave this. Um, but that's the basics of it. And like I said, in eight out of 10 cases, actually it will just merge using Git and you can uh, re-roll that way and it's, uh, it's fine. It's actually a pretty easy task in most cases. Um, Let's see, I'm 24 minutes in and I have um, five minutes behind, so I'm going to run a bit, little bit late. Um, test only patches, um, something to mention. Um, some projects like uh, require tests. How do you demonstrate that the tests uh, change, um, like actually test the changes that you made? You can do that with having two branches where you have one branch where you have only your tests. The other one uh, has the tests plus the code um, and you can merge uh, the tests in uh, once in a while and that 
where you can create two patches, one of which uh, contains only the tests. And if that's run, then those tests should obviously fail because they don't have your actual changes. And the other patch that does have the code changes um, should be fine. So um, this used to be a question. I changed it. Um, it said, who thinks this is uh, a workflow fit for 2020? This is not very interactive. So I'll leave it as this. Uh, it's not exactly a modern workflow fit for 2020. Like I said at the start of the talk, um, next used to be just a single slide. Um, the future is actually GitLab. Um, it's already in use on Drupal.org. Um, and work is actually being done on the per issue repositories. And uh, there's actually a beta running now. Um, this is the idea how that would work. Uh, everything in the dotted area is uh, basically the issue workspace. But actually, I think I'll just uh, show you a few screenshots of how this is working currently. Um, this is uh, an issue on a module that has the um, uh, issue forks enabled. You will see a button create issue fork. Um, when you click that, uh, it'll change to this. You see that an issue fork is available. Uh, you see that I have uh, push access over here, um, right there next to the issue fork uh, headline. You also see the link uh, show commands. If you click that, this is what will um, unfold. It's a few commands that you can um, um, can issue to um, get the to work with the fork. And basically, what you do is you add a new remote to the clone of the module or the project that you created for specifically for the issue. Um, this is where I. Um, uh, execute those commands, the first few from uh, from the help panel. You see that it adds the uh, uh, remote and it gets some branches for it, and the main branches for the seven and eight versions of the module, as well as the branches created for the issue. Uh, if you look in uh, a graphical uh, Git client, I'm a big fan of graphical Git clients, um, because you get this sort of overview, you can actually see the remote over there and you can also see the branch within it. And at the top of the screen, you can also actually see them. Um, then you make some changes and you push, uh, no more creating patches. And then if you look in the issue, you can actually see that your changes were pushed. This uh, commit message over here is what I actually um, uh, entered there. Uh, it was a bit of an experiment because this is not actually um, how a commit message should look. There's also um, uh, guidelines for that as well. Um, like I said, it, I was experimenting a little bit. Um, if you, sorry, if you click on the compare uh, arrows over there within the red section, you go to the GitLab and you get uh, this screen. You can see the, the changes made in the branch. And if you're logged in on GitLab, you also get the create merge request button. And if you click that, and you go back to Drupal.org, you don't need to go back, of course, but uh, this is what it'll look like. You see that there is a merge request. Um, in this case, it's mergeable. And you also see as a comment that uh, a comment was entered automatically saying that the merge request was created. Um, so if then the merge uh, request is um, is merged, uh, maintainer goes in, merges the merge request. This is what it looks like um, uh, in the graphical Git client. Um, I'll go into that question that I see a, a little bit later. Um, Uh, this is what it looks like. So you see the commit over there now, and it's actually um, the um, main branch, the 8.x1.x is actually on that same commit that I created. So that means the future is almost here. There's your flying car. Um, I'm really happy about that. Like I said, when I created this talk at the start of the year, it was 
a little bit out of frustration, even that it's uh, so complicated with all the patches. Uh, I wanted to tell people how that works. Um, and now we actually can um, enter the... Uh... <laughs> I, yeah, I, I'm looking at the chat. I shouldn't be, no, uh, no, no trouble. Um, so let's go to the questions right now. Um, Firfin is asking uh, any GUI Git clients you would recommend for Linux? Um, I am not sure because I don't use Linux myself. Um, I use uh, I use macOS. I think um, Source Tree might be available for Linux, uh, but I'm not sure. I use uh, on the Mac. I use uh, Fork. It's uh, it's very nice. Um, it's also available on Windows. Uh, I know Tower exists. It's also quite nice. Um, like I said, I'm a, I'm a fan of graphical uh, clients because you uh, you see the history, it's always in your face. You don't need to uh, specifically uh, ask for it. Um, sorry, I, I needed this slide. So if there's any more questions, you're, we're actually one minute after time. So other sessions are starting. So if there are no more questions, um, this was my talk. <laughs> and uh, thanks for your attention. Just wait for a few questions, just a little bit longer in case anybody wants to ask. Uh, by the way, if anybody is interested in quarter uh, of an hour and 15 minutes, I will um, be going through the upgrade status module in the OneShoe booth. Um, I will um, run it on uh, one of our clients' websites and I'll look into the results and go through some of the things that uh, it suggests uh, so you can get a Drupal 8 site ready for Drupal 9. So if you're interested in that, uh, please, please visit the OneShoe booth. Okay, um, I'm going to leave this. I'm going to the one shoe booth uh, in, a, in a few minutes. Um, thanks for your attention again and uh, see you later. Bye-bye.